uh, homeopathic college in Chicago. So we have, at this point, a materia medica of approximately 4,000 different substances or what we call remedies. Uh, and this is a very abbreviated kind of a sample list of the kind of things we have in the books. And you can see that some of the remedies come from mineral sources, some from plants, some from animal sources. Uh, some are kind of boring, some are quite interesting. Um, this is a very interesting one. I had a grandma once, a patient, who I gave this to. Works very well. She, she had insomnia and she was sleeping much better. Um, this is an interesting one. Urtica urns is made from uh, stinging nettles. Of course, it's a weed that grows out, and uh, you know we have it here in Minnesota. The, the Minnesota variety is fairly mild. Now, uh, I'm Russian, and um, I'm used to the Russian variety. You go through a growth of that, and you really remember. Uh, it hits you like a thousand mosquitoes. It's, it's, it gets, gives you this red, itchy, prickly rash, uh, which is quite uncomfortable, and it lasts for about a day or two, and then it goes away, and you're fine. So this is one of the most popular methods of punishing children in Russian villages. You just pull down their pants and give them a good beating with stinging nettles, and they remember. Uh, and no way, I never got that treatment. Uh, but why am I telling you this? Well, here, uh, this is uh, a case from way back in the beginning of my practice. I'm replacing a doc at Health Partners. Uh, a patient comes in, this is middle of December, here in Minnesota. Uh, in Maplewood. Uh, the patient has a red rash, which is very itchy and prickly and burny, and he's very uncomfortable. And he tells me, Doc, my usual, my usual doctor usually gives me a Medrol pack when this happens, and I take it and I'm fine. So I said, okay, so pull out prescription, write him a Medrol pack. And then I say, look, you may want to try this instead. Uh, go to present moment, you know, I think this might help. And really, I uh, looking at this and hearing his description and reminded me of the exposure to stinging nettles, like you know, like I experienced in the woods in Russia. Uh, he said, "Okay." Uh, a couple weeks later, I get a letter from him, from him. Doc, your intuition worked great. The rash was gone within two days, and all I used was that uh, urtica urns remedy. So similar, we have disease that looks like. He's been through a growth of stinging nettles. <coughs> we know he wasn't because it's middle of the winter. And so we give him stinging nettles and he gets better. Let's take a look at another interesting one. Pyrogenium is made from, you know, the way you make it is you take a piece of steak, put it out in the sun for a couple of weeks, and it's almost ready. Now, um, once I was giving this talk and a lady from the audience after the talk comes to me and says, you think you're nuts? You think somebody is going to come and see you if you tell them you give them rotten meat to take? Uh, well, on one hand, it's true. On the other hand, if we're talking about similar, if you want to treat a real bad septic disease, then you need to have some real bad stuff that produces a very similar condition. So just imagine what would happen to you if you eat a piece of rotten meat. You'd probably be very septic, probably very sick, diarrhea, fever, all kinds of symptoms. Okay, so here's a case from the same clinic in Maplewood. Uh, this 55-year-old gentleman with influenza for a couple of weeks, he's not improving. He feels real bad. He's got the fever, the sweats, the diarrhea. He's very restless. I already gave him Cipro, and it did not work because obviously it was a viral condition, not bacterial. Antibiotic doesn't do any good. Um, he's got some fever. His tongue is gray, his lungs are clear, he's nothing specific, nothing else. I take the blood for testing, and I see that he's not doing very well. I tell him, go to present moment, get the pyrogenium, because this is what it looked like to me, and come back in two days. Uh, a day later, I get the blood test report, and I see that his BUN and creatinine are creeping up, and he's got hemolyzed blood in the urine, which to me says that he's getting hemoly hemolysis, the the virus is affecting the red cells. So they're breaking up, hemoglobin is coming out, going into the kidneys. Uh, so we're seeing it in the urine, and the kidneys are being plugged up. That's why the BUN and creatinine are creeping up. So we are seeing beginning stages of renal failure. So now I get really scared getting this blood report. 
the patient comes back the next day as he is told, and he says, Doc, I'm better. I'm about 30% better. So I says, okay, we wait. We're not going to treat the numbers. We're going to treat you. So keep taking pyrogenium. We actually went up the potency. I'll explain that. And come back in two days. Two days later, much more better. And over the next two weeks, he was completely cured uh, with rotten meat from his influenza. Now, uh, we probably saved a few thousand dollars in hospital costs because he was going to be admitted if we didn't do this. Um, and so how did we give him the rotten meat? Obviously, I didn't have him eating rotten steak. Uh, and this is how the remedies are made in homeopathy. Um, we take the meat, we blenderize it, we boil it just in case, and then a drop of this is put into an aliquot of solvent. Uh, and depending on the, on the potency we're trying to make, uh, it's either nine drops or 99 drops. So here we drew nine drops. So we put nine drops of this into a bottle of, or uh, one drop of the substance into nine drops of the water. We shake the bottle like this on a hard surface a certain number of times. Then a drop from here goes into the second bottle with the same amount of water. And we shake that again. This is called succussion. And we keep doing this serially. We keep doing these serial dilutions to the level that is desired. And the last stage is done in alcohol because water dissolves sugar. And we want to apply this solution onto sugar pellets to administer to the patient. The sugar pellets are basically a vehicle to make it convenient. And uh, the picture here is of my first, first aid kit. And there's the urtica urns 7x that you can see up there. See? Um, so it says up there, truth is stranger than fiction because life doesn't give a damn about being plausible. Um, we use mainly two main scales in homeopathy. There's a decimal scale where we dilute 1 to 10 every time. And then there's a centesimal scale where we dilute 1 to 100. And they're denoted by either letter X or D sometimes for decimal and C for centesimal. So when you go to Bialy's, and they do have quite a large homeopathic display, and you find, you know, you look what the remedies are. And the remedies will have a name of the remedy, let's say pulsatilla, which is a plant. So they made this from this pulsatilla plant from a tincture. And they dilute it a certain number of times in a certain scale. So the number of times is denoted by the number, and then X is the scale. So if it's pulsatilla, let's say 6X, that means they took a tincture and diluted 1 to 10 six times serially, and you got the remedy. The last stage is applied on the sugar pellets. That's how they're sold. And you can see that when we do it 1 to 10, six times we get approximately one part per million dilution of this substance. If we do it in the centesimal scale, 6C, we get uh, 1 to 100 six times or 10 to minus 12 power dilution. Any problem with math here? Well, anybody, should I explain any of this? No? Uh, so this is very dilute. You know, it's almost not, not, like nothing there. Uh, now, if we do 12C, that's 1 to 112 times or 10 to minus 24th power dilution. Now, do you see a problem? Anybody seeing a problem? This is the problem. This is Avogadro's number. Anybody does not know what Avogadro's number is? Okay, a few people. Uh, okay, Avogadro's number is a number of molecules in a mole of substance. And it's different for every substance. So for water, for example, a mole is 18 grams, or about half an ounce. So a half an ounce of water will contain this number of molecules, approximately 10 to 24th power molecules. So that's why I put the, li the line here. Come on. Uh, because once you dilute beyond that line, beyond that number, you are washing out the substance altogether, and there is nothing left of that material substance in the solution anymore. So the further dilutions we call submolecular. So the rotten meat that I administered to the gentleman with influenza was a 30C dilution, which is 10 to minus 60th power, which is way, way, way beyond Avogadro's number. So definitely submolecular, definitely not a molecule of whatever was left in the rotten meat in that remedy. All right. And yet, within two days, he was much better. And then we raised, we raised him to a 200C. And then he was improving further. 
And the fact is here, which is very strange, the more you dilute like this, the stronger this stuff becomes. So as the patient does not respond anymore to a lower potency, let's say a 30C, we raise the potency to let's say a 200, which is much less of nothing in it. Uh, and they again respond and they do much better. So go figure. We can't explain it. There's no science to explain it. I'm not gonna claim I know why. And yet it works. 